All right, look. My take is, yeah, I'm going to come to you, Crouch, first. Is it unfair that the narrative getting pushed, that Arsenal's throwing it away, and even Arteta said that they are ahead of the schedule now? Mm. So are we kind of giving them a little bit more stick than they actually should? Yeah, I mean, if you look at them last season and to where they are now, you know, even us discussing them as title contenders has been a huge turnaround in fortunes. People wanted Arteta out last year. Yeah. You know, I think we get carried away with half a season. Arsenal have surpassed anyone's aspirations or, or, or anyone's tip for, for how they've achieved this season. And I think, you know, at the start of the season, I think top four was... Uh, you know, was, was, Arsenal fans would have taken that. Uh, now they're in a position now where they've won so many games, they've been so good that it's a disappointment if they've just dropped off. And, and their the level on points with City, any fan would have taken that at the start of the season. It's been a rousing success this season. All right, so Fletch, Arsenal, no wind in the last four in all competitions. Where is this slip? Where does this slip come from? I mean, if I, if I knew that, I'd be straight on the phone to Mikel Arteta. <laughs> I mean, what I do think, Bayo, is this, that one of Arsenal's big strengths this season might now become a weakness, and that is that they've had six players who have started every Premier League match so far this season. They've been settled, they've been together. It's been a team in every sense of the word. You look at Manchester City and they've got the kind of people that if you desperately need a goal from somewhere, Kevin De Bruyne finds it for you, Jack Grealish finds it for you, Erling Haaland scores it for you. I look at this Arsenal team and yes, they've got wonderfully talented people in there, but it's a team in every sense of the word. I think now, though, it's a big ask to say to a group, can you play the whole season like that? You look at the depth he's got. I know they've signed Jorginho. They signed a centre-back, the Polish international. Um, Trossard's coming from Brighton. Does Mikel Arteta, though, now think, I can play Trossard and he's going to be as good as Martinelli or he's going to be as good as Saka? I think this is a group that needs a bit of depth. And, and Crouchy's right. They would have taken fourth at the start of the season. I think today's huge for them. The, the next six or seven games that Arsenal play are against teams that ordinarily you would say they would beat. But they've got the pressure now of Manchester City being right there. And would any of us be surprised now if City win 10 games on the trot, take control of the title race by quite a margin, and in 10 games' time we say, well, that's that. I think we've got to keep in perspective exactly what Arsenal have done this season. They're a team on the rise. They're getting better incrementally season on season. And if this isn't their year, then they certainly look like they're putting a group of players together who can stay around the top four and be challenges for the foreseeable future. Yeah, so, they... Sorry, I was just about to say, so, Crouchy, do Arsenal have the depth? I don't think so, no. I don't, okay. I don't think, compared, if you compare it to Man City, I think anyone who comes in, you know, if, if Saka's replaced, if Martinelli's replaced with Trossard, um, you know, the centre-half, if, if they replace them, Odegaard, if he comes out, they're, they're a weaker side. I think at City, I think you can change... I mean, he's even, he's even taken De Bruyne around, hasn't he? Like, yeah, that, that would be yeah. inconceivable last year. And nothing taken, changes. And nothing, yeah. the, the, the standards don't drop. I think Arsenal's first 11 this season have been as, as good as City's, you know, but I think behind that, City's is a far deeper squad and I think that's what you need to win titles. OK, so now we're talking, let's talk about Man City. Like, do, is, it, is Pepper genius in the sense where that siege mentality that came in and I think we discussed earlier in the sense where he called out his fans. And ever since then, City just seemed like they are fired up. Is this City's title to win? I think so. And I, th I think it was at the start of the season. Um, he is a genius. Yes, he is. He's one of the all-time great managers. He's one of the greatest managers that we've seen in the Premier League or anywhere in Europe. I listened to him yesterday in his press conference. And he was like listening to Sir Alex in his prime. Building up Arsenal, knocking down Manchester City, keeping everything on an even keel. And people keep talking about, with everything that's going on away from the football pitch, does that give them a siege mentality? I don't think so. I don't think Kevin De Bruyne is sat there in the City changing room wondering what's happening in terms of financial irregularities and what charges there might be down the line. I think he sits there and thinks, look, I'm the best midfielder of my type in the world and I'm going to make sure we win enough games now to win the Premier League. And I think that's the mindset of the players. They've been here before, they've done it, they're going to do it again, whether that's this season or next season. They're going to try and win a Champions League as well. The talent is there. The mentality is there. The coach is there. I mean, they're a perfect storm in so many ways as a football team. They're a generational group, just as Manchester United were a generational group. And I think that gives them such a big advantage when a title race is close because they've got that intimidation factor over everybody else. 
All right, Crouchy. So speaking of Manchester United, is this a two-horse or a three-horse race? <laughs> it's amazing how quickly things change. Isn't yeah. it? I mean, we were talking about Arsenal being potentially eight points clear if they'd have won at Brentford, and now we're talking about City going to win it, and yeah. you're asking me about Manchester United. It, it changes, and there will be so many more twists and turns. I think. Um, towards the end of the season, but Manchester United are on on fire at the minute. I'm watching them in in Barcelona the other night. It was, it was. It feels like they're really getting back to to what they were. I think the manager's done an incredible job, and I wouldn't write them off. I think City's form has been as good as they are. It has been indifferent this season. Um, Arsenal's squad, you've we, we've just touched on it. There is it is it is it big enough? Um, and Manchester United are on fire. So I think you have to you have to count them. I would say no. I don't think no. they are. And I don't think they are because I don't think in the next two or three weeks we will have what we consider to be a title race. I just think City are going to put the foot on the accelerator from this point on a motor away as they do. I think Manchester United have a really good chance to finish second. So I think that they would look at this season under Eric Ten Hag as a big success as well. Arsenal will finish in the top four, whether it's second or third, depending on how they finish. And that's a big success to them. But I, I can't see Manchester United... With the deficit they've got, being able at this stage of the development under Eric Ten Hag to do what Manchester City are likely to do, which is go and reel off a sequence of wins. I think with Christian Eriksen, if they got a number nine that the manager really believed in, then maybe. But I think this is probably a season too early, maybe 18 months too early, before Manchester United can sit there and say, look, we are confident that we can just match City result for result. But they're a lot closer than I thought they were going to be at this stage, which is which is a huge testament to the manager and what he's done this season. Though. OK, so you put City winning it. Yes. So now let's talk about Arsenal, Man United. Does Man United have a more in-depth squad than Arsenal, in your opinion? I think it's more changeable, yeah. I think yeah. there are more moving parts to Manchester United. I think there's more depth. I do. Um, and again, I think that's, that's an issue that Arsenal are addressing and will address as it moves forward. But when you think about it, they've not finished in the top four since Arsene Wenger was the manager. You know, they've been on the outside looking in yeah. for quite some time. And by doing that, you end up with a squad that's not as deep as the, t the, as the squads that are playing in the Champions League on a season-by-season on -season basis, which, to all intents and purposes, that's, what's Man that's what Manchester United have been doing. I do think they're deeper, yeah. All right, so real quick, I'm going to ask the both of you, who finishes higher, Man United or Arsenal? Arsenal. Man United or Man Arsenal? United. OK, OK, OK. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like what you're saying there. But you... All right, cool. No, uh, I think Arsenal have been fantastic this season. And I think because they've had a wobble recently, you know, we're so quick to, to, to put them down. I think they can get back to... Would to you change your mind if they lose here today? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> To win today, let's be honest. Yeah, 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 you must be loving that Arsenal and that, that wobbling. No, not at all. Listen, you know, we, we want the great clubs to be to be up there, and, and Arsenal are a great club that deserve to be up there. 